Hey robot makers, do you want to add a keypad to your Raspberry Pi Pico projects? Then keep watching. So let's take a look at the keypad. So it has 16 buttons, 10 numbers, some letters A to D. And it also has the star and the hash or pound if you're American. And if you look at the bottom of the keypad, you'll see that it has a little ribbon. And on this ribbon, there are eight cables. And then four of them are rows and four of them are for columns. So the way that the keypad works is that you scan the rows one at a time and the columns one at a time to see if one of the buttons is being pressed. And you do this very rapidly so that the user can't tell that there's a, a scanning actually happening. It just seems to work. So for example, if we press the number five key, we would detect that by activating the column two and checking on row two to see if that's activated or not. And this means that we only need eight pins rather than 16 pins, one for each button. So this technique of detecting which buttons pressed is called key scanning. And it's how keyboards work on all computers. So we're gonna look at row one and we're gonna to check to see on column one if the button is pressed. If it's not pressed, the value will be low. If the button is pressed, it'll be high. It'll be shorting the, the circuit together. And what we do is we do this in rapid succession. So we check row one, we check column one, column two, column three, column four, and we see if any of those buttons are pressed. And then we move to row two and do column one, column two, column three, column four, and then row three. And you get the idea, we go through these rapidly. So how do we wire this up? It's quite simple, we just need eight pins on our Raspberry Pi Pico. So I've used uh, pins two through to nine. They correspond to rows one, two, three, four, and columns one, two, three, four as well. And see there, this is how they're aligned. So row one contains the numbers one, two, three, and the letter A. Row two contains four, five, six, and B, and so on. So I've written a simple program here that's gonna test out this keypad. So the first thing we do is we import from machine pin. And we're also importing sleep from the time library. And we set up two constants, one for key up and one for key down. Key up is zero, key down is one. So this is a two dimensional array that's got the, the numbers in the right sequence. So one, two, three, A, four, five, six, B, seven, eight, nine, C, star, zero, hash, and D. And that corresponds to the keypad itself. Next up, we assign the pins on the Pico. So we assign pins two, three, four, and five. They're gonna be the row pins and the six, seven, eight, nine are for the columns. We then set those pins up. And the way that we do that is by a little for loop here. So we're gonna say, set each pin, the pin name. And the pin name is actually this variable here. And it, what it will do is it'll loop through two, three, four, five, and it will set the mode to pin.out. So our rows are gonna output a value of one. Then for our columns, this is how we detect which key is actually pressed. We're gonna make them a pin in. So again, the same kind of thing, we're gonna loop through the columns six seven eight and nine and then we're going to assign them a pin in and they also have the pull up resistor as well to simply initialize it we're going to have two for loops so that will go through four times and it'll loop through our little row thing so pins two three four and five and similarly we're going to go through columns as well and what we're going to do is set each of the pins to low just so that they're initialized to a zero value so next up is the scan function this takes in two parameters the row and the column and this is going to scan the keypad so initially we're going to bring in whichever row we're working on we're going to set that to high and that's going to activate that particular row we're going to set the key to none and then if the column pins column which is the column that we're currently working on is key down then we're going to set the key to key down and if the column pin is key up we're going to set key to key up and then we're going to tidy up the row pins by setting that back down to low and then we'll return whichever value the key was then got a little print statement just so that i know that the program's running i run the initialization thing and then i've got a little loop that runs forever that says for row in range four so it'll go around four times and then for column in range four and again that will go around four times so four times four that's each of the 16 buttons scanned we're going to say key equals scan the row and the column and if the key is key down then we simply say key pressed and then we just return which of the keys has been pressed by looking up in the keys array which if you look right at the very top is this array here so if we press number five for example that's on the second row and the second column okay so let's try this code out so our program's now started if i press the, the number one button we can see one is pressed if i press two two is pressed 3A456B789C. four five six B seven eight nine C star zero hash and D. So I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Uh, if you've not already, why not consider subscribing to the channel, dropping me a comment or a like, and uh, hitting the little bell so you get notified next time a video goes out there. So see you next time.